Okay, Orlando Wilson here. And what I want to talk about in this short video is something I had a conversation with, with somebody just last evening. A friend of mine in America is in the, how can we say, military con contracting, risk management world, etc. And we were laughing in a lot of ways because ISIS, the Islamic State, is beginning to make, uh, make the headlines again after it disappeared for a while. Islamic State, I think, at the moment is the is the brand name for Islamic extremists. It's the Coca-Cola of the ex Islamic extremist world. It's the brand name. They seem to make an appearance in the media whenever there's a need for public opinion in the West to be swayed behind a war. And one of the big questions, and one of this is something which uh, how can I put it? Let's talk about conspiracy theory. Who supports ISIS? Who is ISIS? You know what? It's a big question mark of who actually supports the Islamic State. The Islamic State appeared during the Syrian, uh, Syrian civil war. Um, and there's a lot of rumors it was supported by the US, it was formed by the US, it was formed by Israel, it was formed by the British, etc. to help, well, to try and uh, overthrow the Assad government, the Al-Assad government. And it didn't work. Why uh, Hezbollah got involved on the Syrian government side and also Russia got involved. That was the big turning point. But again, if we look at the facts on the table, what's been reported about support for a lot of the Islamic extremists in in the Middle East. You know what? Al-Nusra was an offshoot of Islamic State because I think Islamic State went a little bit too far and screwed up their brand. So Al-Nusra appeared in Syria. Um, it's documented in mainstream media that uh, the Israelis were providing medical support and logistical support to Al-Nusra. Um, there's been many reports that from the Syrian side that they were hit by be it missiles, they're hit by airstrikes from NATO friendly countries and straight after the airstrikes there was a coordinated attack by Islamic extremist groups on their positions. If we look again at another group a lot of people celebrate, that's the White Helmets, now disbanded I understand, an NGO formed by a British army officer that fell off a a balcony in Turkey somewhere and died conveniently. You know what? They were operating in Islamic extremist areas. They were uh, labeled by many as being ISIS's media wing. Okay, how would an NGO supported by, that was formed by a British army officer, be operating in areas controlled by ISIS, Al Nusra, and other extremist groups if they weren't paying people off, if they weren't facilitating those groups? Why were they putting out very pro Islamic State videos, etc., and providing media support for Islamic State, um, even though it was anti Al Assad, anti Syrian government, etc.? And this is what a lot of people forget. From a Christian perspective, it was Hezbollah in Syria, it was Hezbollah and the Syrian government that's actually supporting the Christians. A lot of the extremist groups were, um, well, Islamic extremist groups were killing Christians whenever they could or whenever they get their hands on them. So this is where a lot of the supposed bad guys were the good guys as far as Christians are, were, were concerned, and they were protecting Christians. Um, another thing to do with a lot of these extremist groups, well, a fact that points to an incident We'll put it in some more of an incident in UK. How many years ago there was an attack on, I think, a Manchester, a Manchester arena where some terrorist Islamic extremists, radicalized kids went in and attacked uh, the Manchester arena. How many people were killed, etc. One of those kids, not kids, one of those terrorists had reportedly been working in uh, Libya with an extremist organization. They had extremist links. And it came out at his court trial, and all this was kept hush hush, that while he was with the extreme extremist groups, there was British instructors there, be it, whether it's British intelligence, etc., whether they're providing 
funding or facilitating, but there were Brits, British government personnel, with the uh, extremist groups. There's been reports out of Syria that there were British instructors with a lot of these extremist groups. So you know what, the facts are on the table. I think a lot of conspiracy theories are coming true at the moment. So this is where ISIS always appears when division is needed, when the West needs to turn the general public's opinion against, well, they need to turn it, not against, they need to turn it against Muslims and also get the support of the general public for a war, a war in the Middle East. And I think this is where we're rolling at the moment. Will there be ISIS attacks? Will there be ex Islamic extremist attacks in the West? You know what, that threat's been going on for a long time and I'm surprised there's not been more. But I'd say yes, the potential for terrorist attacks in the West at the moment, Western Europe, United States is pretty high. The reasons for those attacks, and again, terrorism always has a reason and the general the mainstream media will put it as these terrorists just want to punish the West. They want to kill Christians. They want to... The usual bullshit. If we're looking at this in depth and if we're talking about the intelligence world, the murky world of the intelligence world, etc. Do they just want to kill Christians or are they there for a reason to cause division? And cause division... Cause division amongst the general public and also get the general public to, how can we put it, support a war in the Middle East or support the government taking more military action in the Middle East in support of, I don't know, different groups they support in the Middle East. So I think people need to look a little bit more in depth. I'd say yes, I think there's a very, very strong potential for terrorist attacks in the West, but what's the reason? ISIS has had plenty of opportunity over the last how many years to be active. They've not been active. Why? Who knows? But now all of a sudden everybody's beating the ISIS drum. So why are they going to be active now when Europe and the US is on a fairly high alert towards terrorism? They could have had the past few years, they could have had plenty of soft targets. Now that drum's beginning to beat. As I said, ISIS is the brand name for Islamic terrorism. It's the Coca-Cola of the terrorist world. Um, you're going to get a lot of the lone wolves, but any organized attacks, I'd say they're going to be organized for a reason and they're going to be organized to uh, cause division and there's going to be a lot more to it if you look, if you look, uh, if you look behind what's actually behind the attacks, I'd say it's going to be to more to sway the general public's opinion towards supporting more military action in the Middle East than actually combating terrorism. You know what? If the governments that be wanted to actually combat terrorism with all the resources they have, you could combat terrorism. ISIS should have been wiped out a long, long, long time ago. But it seems to appear, disappear, appear, disappear, and appear again when needed. So. There's, uh, there's a lot of question marks there. And I think if you think this is a conspiracy theory, yeah, it is a conspiracy theory. But a lot of these conspiracy theories have been coming true. So let's see what happens. I hope all this blows over. None of this is good for anybody. It's just uh, the only people it's good for is the, the armaments companies and the political elites. And I've said in other videos at the moment, I think the, the West at least has been ruled by a bunch of... Uh, psychopathic warmongers that's forgotten what diplomacy is all about. They're not worried about their countries. They're not worried about their people. They're just worried about making money for themselves and grabbing power. But just my opinion. In the meantime, follow me along on social media. If you have any questions, reach out and ask. Um, we try to try to stay away from the political stuff, but we've been drawn more and more into it. Um, Risk Inc. is a little bit political and our alliances are, how can I put it, we don't have alliances. We align with common sense and good people. We'll leave it there. Um, in the meantime, as I said, follow me along on social media. I like, uh, I prefer LinkedIn and X, but we've also got stuff up on Instagram and uh, YouTube. And also I have an array of books up on social media and we have a Telegram group that's uh, not too politically correct. So in the meantime, follow me along, be good, stay safe and stay out of trouble. 
And remember, in these crazy days, always be aware of what's going on, where you are, etc. And uh, stay out of trouble, big time.